Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Brian Reviews. Today we're taking a look at a shoe that New Balance said if they can only make one shoe, this would be it. It's the New Balance 1080 V12. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, I didn't have a chance to preview this video and the final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The 1080V12 is New Balance's premier flagship daily trainer. It's a max cushion neutral road running shoe. Now they do have an ultra max cushion shoe, which is called the More V3, and I have it up there in the corner. Really enjoyed running in that shoe, and I'm very excited for the V4. But the 1080 essentially is kind of their jack of all trades daily trainer, which a lot of people know and love. This $160 shoe did go up in weight, it's about a full ounce, which is quite a bit, and now comes in at about 10.3 ounces. However, we do get a little bit more in the midsole. The stack height did go up about two millimeters. We now get about roughly 36 millimeters in the heel, 28 in the forefoot for a total drop of eight millimeters, same as last year. The upper is made out of something called hypo knit, which essentially means the top of the toe box is really stretchy and elastic, very comfortable. The sides of the toe box and the midfoot cage are made out of a non-elastic material, so it does keep your foot well contained. It's really just the top of the toe box that's super elastic. As far as the fit of the upper, it's definitely a longer shoe. I'm like right on the fence between saying go down half a size. It is just a smidge too long. So I think if you're someone who's kind of right on the fence, kind of, I would say maybe go down half a size, uh, just because it is just a smidge too long and you have that really elastic upper. This is also a kind of a hotter shoe, and I say that because it's not the most well ventilated. Typically, most running shoes, as you know, have most of their ventilation or kind of open mesh in the toe box, and even here in the toe box is rather closed off and very dense, a very dense knit upper. So it's not the most breathable shoe. I'm curious how it performs as we get into some of these hotter summer days or as the temperature kind of picks up, but for the most part, I will say it's not the most breathable. The tongue on the shoe is partially gusseted and rather thin. It has a low amount of padding. Thought it was very comfortable, didn't have any issues. Uh, one unique feature of this tongue is that because it connects to the hypo knit, which is super elastic and stretchy, you can kind of pull it up uh, and get it and move it around how you want. It just kind of provides a unique sensation compared to other tongues, which kind of connect to a non-elastic mesh or upper, where here, again, you can kind of pull it and move it around because it's connected to the elastic uh, hypo knit section on the toe box. Moving to the back of the shoe, this has been the Achilles heel of the 1080, pun very much intended. Uh, I had the V9 and the V10, I skipped the V11. Uh, the heel counter just didn't it just let me down I had a lot of heel slip and it would just kind of fall apart on me but this one it was a more traditional heel counter just feels like a more traditional running shoe with a little bit of an elf ear pull tab back here and I really like it I'll go as far as to say, go as far as to say is that this is probably the best heel counter on a 1080 running shoe just fits fully fits very well has a good lockdown an average amount of padding it's nothing too crazy it's not super plush uh, it's kind of on the I guess more I guess moderate side of things um, but the heel counter uh, rather sturdy towards the base and a little bit more flexible towards the top so happy to see they kind of went a more traditional route with the heel counter because this was again a big Achilles heel heel for the 1080 so seems like they fixed it I liked the lockdown it wasn't amazing but it was was definitely good and a lot better than previous versions in my opinion very comfortable and no major issues the midsole is made out of something called fresh foam x an eva based compound and in my opinion this is more like a softer foam doesn't have a ton of energy return to it. it's not like super bouncy it feels just more soft a little bit more plush now it's not like a super mushy foam where you get lost in the midsole itself i know i think some other running shoes have that problem it just feels like a more soft more plush experience the midsole is also relatively flexible for being a max cushion shoe which is nice you do get quite a bit of flex in the forefoot so it feels like your foot moves with the shoe fairly easily it has a nice kind of smooth ride now it does look like there is a rocker geometry to it just because of how it's curved and i don't think that's necessarily the case or it wasn't super noticeable to me uh, i just don't think the midsole really held that uh, basically geometry or curvature towards the front of the shoe really really do notice that toe off sensation it does have a more pronounced i guess more noticeable geometry in the heel section where it's beveled and you do get this split point heel which i'm curious why they did that like the swallowtail heel. Uh, I think from from what I understand from other shoes, it, it's supposed to help with like heel striking and impact. But overall, I thought the shoe in the midsole itself had a really nice flow to it. The midsole is also incredibly wide in the forefoot, midfoot, and heel section, which just gives you a ton of ground contact and a really large platform to land on. Now, this isn't like a super stable neutral shoe, but having this much ground contact does give you a stable base to land on. I will say because the foam is a little bit softer and the shoe is a little bit more flexible, it's not the most stable neutral shoe ever. So if you need stability, I'd probably go with something like the Vongo, but you do have just a ton of surface area here and a ton of ground contact. Now, in my opinion, I think the midsole is a lot less soft than it 
actually looks. You get a huge chunk in the heel, looks like the forefoot's really wide, looks really thick as well, but it doesn't really come to deliver on the max cushion experience. Is it soft and plush? Yes, but is it as soft and plush as it? I feel like it should be for a max cushion shoe? And my answer is no. I feel like I was able to bottom it out a couple times when I haven't done that for other like max cushion typical daily trainers. So it does provide a nice, smooth, well cushioned experience. I just don't think it lives up to the true like max cushion name or category. As far as the outsole is concerned, you get a ton of thick rubber coverage uh, with the only exposed midsole foam being towards the back of the shoe. Now, this is kind of like your typical New Balance lug pattern. Again, extremely wide forefoot, a really like a wide waisted midfoot and a really wide heel crash pad. So I think with all this surface area and a ton of rubber, I personally did not have any issues and I thought it gripped the ground really well and you should get quite a bit of miles out of it, especially with this much rubber coverage. So those are all the basic facts about the shoe. Let's talk about what I liked and what I didn't like so much. The first big update for me, or the big thing I liked about the shoe was the update to the heel section. It's much more traditional, has a better lockdown, more comfortable, and just works. I've had some issues again with the nine and the 10. Uh, I didn't have the chance to try the V11, but here on the V12, it feels much more traditional, much more comfortable, and I really didn't have any major heel slipping issues like it did with those previous versions. So I think the fact that New Balance updated the heel counter to make it more traditional, get the little healthier pull tab, which I like, I think is a step in the right direction. My next positive is that it's a rather comfortable upper, and for me personally, it has kind of like the right amount of padding. It's not too plush, it's not minimal, it's just kind of like right in the sweet spot. The ankle and Achilles area has just enough padding. Same thing goes with the tongue. Mid midfoot, I thought it had a good lockdown. That hypo knit um, upper, especially in the toe box, was very comfortable. The 1080 V12 was also really smooth, had a nice kind of flow to it. Again, the midsole is relatively flexible for a max cushion shoe, so it kind of moves with your foot. And I really appreciated the wide forefoot and heel section just because it has a nice uh, wide area to kind of land down without making the shoe feel too bulky. However, the shoe wasn't perfect, and there are a couple things that can probably Probably be improved. The first negative is the breathability. I had this issue on the V10 and here on the V12, it's kind of similar with like a really, again, dense, thick hypo knit upper, which is very comfortable. It's just not the most breathable. And my next thing is I think the midsole wasn't the most lively. It was a really soft, plush experience. It just didn't have a lot of energy return or bounce to it. And on some occasions, I felt like I was able to kind of get to the bottom of it fairly easily. So again, nice, smooth, comfortable, plush ride. I just wish it had a little bit more energy return and bounce. And the last thing is it went up a full ounce in weight to 10.3. Now 10.3 ounces, isn't terrible and it's not great. It's kind of like right on the line, but it is kind of getting on the heavier side of things compared to like other daily trainers. So where does that leave us? Well, I think the 1080 V12 is a well-built daily trainer and I'm very happy they fixed the heel counter issue. It's a huge step in the right direction. I think this works well for people who want one shoe to kind of make it their workhorse daily trainer to put a ton of miles into and just want a shoe that won't let them down or kind of break down on them. However, if you're someone who wants something a little bit more, I guess a little bit more bouncy, a little bit more cushion to it and just a little bit more energy return out of the midsole, um, I would probably go in a different direction or if you want something that's just a little bit more breathable. However, if you're someone who wants something, it's like a plush, soft experience and it's just something that's very comfortable you can put a ton of miles into, I think the 1080 12 will be for you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.